Everyone, this is Ross, and today we're going to do a quick grafting demo. If you guys want to see more videos on grafting, uh, we've done plenty of videos now on the subject. There's a lot of benefits to this, and the big benefit of today is that this is a new variety that I've acquired called Campaneri. Um, I have two pretty mature trees, actually, of this that we planted in the ground. Because it's an exceptionally hardy variety, all the way down to negative, or um, I'm sorry, negative four degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this one's really exceptional in terms of hardiness, but also in earliness, it's rain resistance, um, and also the quality of the fruit. So this one I'm, I'm valuing very highly, and what we're gonna do with this, these cuttings here, is that three of these cuttings, which there's three of them, we're actually gonna be planting them in the yard. Uh, so I want a total of five Campaneri trees in the ground this year. But you can see there's only five, there's only three cuttings here. So if we have two in the ground, three in my hand, that would be five. So how am I going to do grafting? Well, if you take a look at these cuttings, is that there's lots of nodes. And we can take off different nodes sort of closer to the top. And we can graft that. And still have ourselves a pretty thick healthy, full of energy cutting that we can then root in the ground. We've talked about rooting these guys in the ground as well. You can see here in all these new plantings, we've chopped the trees back to the base. All the excess cuttings that we've had on top, we are now rooting those in the ground and propagating those as extra, uh, extra trees. We did this last year, the old man way of propagating Fig cuttings, there's a whole video on that. We did. We showed you guys the results. It's real easy. I think it's actually a better way to root cuttings than actually rooting them outdoors in a pot. I think rooting them outdoors in a pot can be a bit tricky. And uh, the good news with these cuttings in particular is that these are pretty fresh. These are not cuttings that have been sitting in my fridge all winter time. So the idea here is that these are pretty, uh, you know, gonna be pretty easy to root, but whatever's left over here, of whatever I can take off, we're gonna graft that onto rootstock and have these guys in containers. And that way I have a, about a, maybe two weeks to four weeks earlier crop off that particular variety. Uh, we can also put it in the greenhouse, and I would expect Campaneri or really any of the very early varieties, I'm gonna really be able to get those to ripen probably in July, maybe even you know late June, because if I put them in the greenhouse, they're gonna set fruit very early. And we've done that in the past too. We've showed you guys how that's easily um, accomplished. My Azores Dark has ripened for numerous years, July 1st. So what we have here is, this cutting only has three nodes on it. Also, on the bottom, it's already sort of calloused up. So this is gonna root pretty quickly. So this whole cutting here, we can't use this. We need all those nodes uh, for rooting it. Now, this cutting here and this cutting here has plenty of nodes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six nodes. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six as well. So I think four is a pretty good number. So that means on the bottom, <clears throat> We've already got ourselves some callus. We're going to keep that and instead We're going to take these nodes off the top and we're going to graft these so Let's do that now and that's kind of just a little insight into you know How I've selected this and why I've selected this Just checking the battery life there on the camera. So we're going to just cut above this This is the fourth node. This is the fifth node and this is the sixth node so we're gonna cut above the fourth node. And again, this is a cleft graft. <clears throat> Nothing crazy here. And then we're gonna cut this at the right height that I think is reasonable. What I would suggest not doing is grafting it way up high. This, is, this rootstock's about two feet tall from the base of the pot to the top here. So we don't wanna graft it at two feet. Um, plus the the growth up at the top let me cut this off it's pretty green um, we don't want to be grafting it to that we want to graft to pretty hardened up wood also you'll notice here <clears throat> the sap is flowing 
Um, so if the tree is growing, the temperatures are pretty warm outside, you can pretty much guarantee that there's gonna be some sap flow. You don't want little sap flow. You don't want too much sap flow. You want some sap flow right in the middle. And about 78 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna have our optimal callusing point. So that's what we're doing is we are, in fact, we could actually stick this cutting. We could stick this in the ground and have ourselves another hardy Chicago. But uh, I don't know. I've already got plenty of hardy Chicagos. So, oh wait, we need our knife. Oh, here's our knife. <laughs> so get yourself your grafting knife. We're gonna shave this down. Um, you know, nothing crazy. You don't have to do this in one little fell swoop. And by the way, this is the first graft I'm doing in a, about a year's, maybe, not, well, not a year, but maybe a whole year. So bear with me here. I haven't done this in a while. You gotta get your form back, you know what I mean? But this is pretty decent. Um, I don't wanna get too carried away shaving this down, that's for sure. Um, you can see here, if I can focus this for you maybe, that's what we're looking at. Just a nice little triangle on the back, on the bottom of the cutting. And it's pretty thin. But I don't want to make this too thin because if we make this too thin, it's going to be pretty weak. The next step here uh, is actually we're going to take our paper towel, take off the sap off the top. You may have to do, if you have too much sap flow, just score it down further down on the, on the, uh, the trunk. And then we're just going to make a slit Maybe if I'll do it this way so you guys can see, it's pretty difficult, but we're kind of just making a cut down the middle of this thing here. So that's what I'll do for you guys. And I don't want to go too deep because the, the bark on a fig is kind of, uh, they're kind of weak, very pliable at this point. Um, so you can see that there's a nice little slit In between here very easy and then the last thing here is just going to stick this in and the nice thing about this is that the diameter matches up real good um, but I'm gonna put this slightly on a slant just so I can ensure really good cambium contact also getting this as deep in there as I can without splitting this further down. So what I like to do is hold this and then jam it in there a little bit deeper. And that gets you a real snug fit. And that's what we want, we want a snug fit. Last thing we need to do though is tie it off because if we don't tie it off, we are gonna be screwed. We also need to support this for an entire year. So this rubber band will offer some good support and then what's going to end up happening is that this graft is going to grow. I don't want to tie this rubber band too tight. It's just really a simple little, just a little bit of support. If we tie it too tight, we're going to girdle the bark, girdle the tree a little bit too much. And that's not what we want either. So this is taking me a bit of time here, but... At least I can talk to you guys as I'm doing it. We've got ourselves our parafilm. This is in, of utmost importance, without a doubt, in any orchards, orchardist's selection of tools. I think this is unbelievably useful in so many different ways. So we're just wrapping this, and I think the nice part about doing this now is that because the tree is awake and it's not too hot outside, this graph's gonna have a pretty good chance of not desiccating, which is good. Obviously, you don't want the top here to desiccate because if the top desiccates or the top dies, in no way is this gonna take. The other really important piece here is that we really want to get both sides of the graph to take. When we slit this in here, 
there's contact on this side and there's also contact behind it. And because there's contact on both sides, if you get contact, you get good contact there, that's really to your benefit because then it's gonna take on both sides and that's a good graft, you know? That's what a good graft looks like. Whereas I've done some graphs, and I'm sure you guys have done some graphs where only one side of the cleft graft had taken and the thing's really weak. It has a super weak point in the tree, in the graft, and inevitably what ends up happening is that it falls off. Um, you get a freak windstorm, something like that. Maybe you're not supporting it and it just completely falls off. So that's the graft. And we can label this and know what this is. And then if this takes, which I'm expecting it to, we can then put this pot into a five gallon, a 10 gallon, a 15 gallon, any size pot we want. As long as we don't bury the graft, this variety will survive. So that was this quick and short little grafting demo, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Really excited to share with you my results from this variety. It's super, super exciting, to be honest with you. All right, everyone. Take care. Catch you for tomorrow's video.